This is a prime time kind of video for me since this video involves talking about the story of Mortal Kombat and specifically about the story for Mortal Kombat 11 and you guys already know how much I love the story of Mortal Kombat. So what do we know so far about it? What are the facts? Well, let me list them off for you guys. Netherrealm has described it as its best-in-class story mode that continues the saga over 25 years in the making, a time-bending story, and the mystery woman that you see at the end of the, of the MK11 trailer is at the center of the story mode. As of this day, the day this is uploaded, those are the facts of what we have for the story. Alright, now let's move on to the speculation part. If you haven't seen my video already talking about the new character in the MK11 trailer, go ahead and check that out because I'm going to be talking about her a lot more in this video. So, I don't have a lot to go off of, but I do have enough to give my hot takes on the story. As you should know by now, I fully believe that the new character in the MK11 trailer is the same woman from Jade's MK9 ending and Kitana's MKX ending. I'm also 99% sure the two Mortal Kombat timelines are going to play a huge factor in this game's story mode. If you take a look at some of the intros in Injustice 2, it seems like Netherrealm was hinting at their MK11 story through the mirror match intros from Sub-Zero, where they explicitly say something about the two timelines merging. Take a look. There should not be two of us. Our realm splintered timelines are merging. We must battle to save them both. Now that I can reasonably assume that the two timelines are going to play a part in the story, the motivation for the Mystery Woman is to undo what Raiden did by revisiting the original timeline. So what that would mean is that we could be revisiting the events from Mortal Kombat 1 to Mortal Kombat Armageddon. However, since Mortal Kombat 9 already focused on retelling or trying to retell the events of MK1 to MK3, and Mortal Kombat X took elements from MK4, I would like to believe and hope that MK11's story will focus more on the storylines that happened in the 3D era, so from Deadly Alliance to Armageddon. This also makes me question which bits are they going to revisit, and to me, I think the important ones they should revisit are Shijinko's quest, Taven's quest and Onaga's return. The reason why I think they should revisit Onaga is because he really is the last boss character Netherrealm hasn't used yet. Now, I know there's Blaze, but Blaze is barely even a character. Onaga's more of a character and more of a better character, in my mind, to be relevant to return. And he doesn't even have to be the main boss, but I think it's important to include such a major character like Onaga if your story is going to involve the different timelines merging together or going in different places from the original. The same could be said about Shujinko. Love him or hate him guys, but he is a very important character and is pretty much the face of MK Deception alongside Onaga. Dark Raiden and Shijinko also have a bit of a feud between each other in that game, and now that we have Dark Raiden again in this timeline in the current one, I think it makes for a relevant comeback for Shujinko. And lastly, Taven's quest from Armageddon. The whole time-bending gimmick in Mortal Kombat 9 was due to the end of Armageddon. And now that we're going to be doing the same thing again with MK11, not exactly, but we're going to be visiting the same kind of gimmick with time, you're going to have to revisit Armageddon. And if you are, the appropriate thing to do is to bring back the face of that game, or the faces of that game, and that being Taven. And heck, even bring back Dagon too, since you kind of have to have them both if you're going to have one of them in there. We already know Netherrealm has been hinting at their return in this new timeline through the MKX endings, and if the characters are going to have two different versions of themselves, like the trailer implies with the two scorpions, why not do the same for Taven and Dagon? When Netherrealm describes the game's story as continuing the saga over 25 years in the making, that sounds really inclusive to even the 3D era games, since they obviously are part of that 25 year period. So I think it's appropriate to get a certain amount of characters to represent each game. So that's why I say I think Onaga and or Shujinko should be back to be the representation of MK Deception and Taven 
Draven and Dagon to represent Armageddon. With Deadly Alliance, you can have Kenshi come back since he made his debut in that game, and then add in Lee Mei or Nitara and to give more representation to that game. The reason why I didn't really talk about Deadly Alliance is because that story really is a story about two very specific characters doing a very specific thing that really isn't needed to be back. And also the reason why I don't say Shang Tsung and Quan Chi to represent Deadly Alliance is because Shang is an MK1 character and Quan Chi is an MK4 character. But here's some of the questions that I have. Are they going to be showing events that didn't happen in the original timeline and have a completely new third or fourth timeline? The reason I say this is because if the Injustice 2 intros are anything to reference, there's a Raiden Mirror Match intro dialogue that says this. In my realm, Liu Kang and Katana rule Edinia. In mine, they govern the Nether Realm. Whose incompetence led to this falling? Now, if you are familiar with the canon, you would know that Liu Kang and Katana don't rule Adenia in either the new or original timeline. So if this is just an easter egg, or if this was Netherrealm hinting at something we could possibly see in the MK11 story. I obviously don't know, so I am interested to see what they can do with that. Another question I have is, if we are getting two different versions of each character, one from the original and one from the current, how is that going to work for Cassie Cage and the Combat Kids? Now that's if they return, but I think they are likely to return, at least some of them are probably likely to return. But how is that going to work for Cassie Cage and the Combat Kids who don't exist at all in the original? You can probably get away with it with Kotal Kahn, Aaron Black, and Devora, and some of those other characters because there's nothing stopping them from existing in the original timeline. It's just that they're obviously going to be as unimportant as possible since they aren't in any of the previous games. But again, for the Combat Kids, I really don't know what they're going to do and I would like to see how that'll be addressed. And the last question I have is, who's going to be the main boss? For me, I believe it's going to be Dark Raiden or the Mystery Woman, or it could possibly even be both, as we the player could possibly end up choosing sides, like how it was in the Injustice 2, where we could choose either Superman or Batman's side. This answer I probably won't know for sure until much later, but my bets are on Dark Raiden and the Mystery Woman both like as the main boss, like you're going to end up choosing between Dark Raiden's side or the Mystery Woman's side. So the question goes to you guys, what do you want to see in Mortal Kombat 11's story? What events from the original would you like to see revisited? And who do you think is going to be the main boss this time around? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video and subscribe for more MK11 content. I'll see you all real soon guys, take care.